Hey everybody, um, so today I just wanted to do a quick video on what a queued message handler is and how you can implement one in LabVIEW. Um, so if you haven't already, I have a video on the producer consumer. Um, I think it's helpful if you watch that one before you watch this one. I think this one will make a little more sense um, if you do. Um, not that you have to before we talk about this. So um, the queued message handler is a design pattern in LabVIEW. Essentially, the goal is to have a um, basically leveraging queues so that one thread can basically send messages to another thread so that it can do something. So um, in this example, I am only going to set up two separate uh, loops, which is two separate threads. Um, you actually can have many, many more, um, you know, threads. Um, a lot of times, right, there will be you know, a uh, basically event receiver that sends the uh, you know messages down to a message receiver, and you could have tons of pairs of threads like that. Um, but also, you could set up designs where um, you know maybe there's one message receiver, and you could have dozens of other things that are sending messages to that one. So it really depends on your architecture. Um, in this simple example, I'm just going to set it up so we just have two queues. Um, and I'm going to label this top one as the event handling loop. And I'm going to label this bottom one as the message handling loop. So our top loop is going to um, handle events. Um, and it's going to send those events down to our message handling loop that will actually execute on them. So. Let's uh, first, let's just add a shutdown event for our top loop. Um, sweet. And let's set up our queue now. So if you go to synchronization and go to queue operations, we can find all of the queue functions. So the first thing we're going to need to do is obtain the queue. Um, and now the only required field here is we need to specify the element data type. Um, so for a queued message handler, there are a few different ways that you can do this. So strings are a common way to send messages. Um, you can also do enums. Um, there's pros and cons of each, right? Um, with an enum, you don't have to worry about typos and whatnot, and you can set it as a type def so that when you add new you know, messages, everything auto updates, which is great. But sometimes you need to be able to kind of dynamically generate your messages um, and so strings are flexible in that way. So there's pros and cons each way. Um, personally, I usually set up my queues like this, where I have a cluster, and in that cluster, I will have a string, and I'm just gonna label that message. Um, and I'm also going to create a variant constant, and I'm gonna label that data. So what this allows me to do is send a message that is a string, but also include other data with it. So I find that a flexible you know, design. And because it's a variant, I can send any kind of data with it. So whether I'm sending like a true false, whether I'm sending like a numeric value, some massive cluster of some sort, um, you know, anything, right? I can send any data, I can just convert it to a variant, and then my message handler can go and basically convert that variant to any other data type. So, um, yeah, that's how we're going to create this queue for this example. And I'm actually going to branch this reference and bring it down to um, my message handling loop. So now we've got our queue fed to both of these loops. Um, now, down here, I'm going to be using the DQ element. So this is going to be pulling data out of the queue um, when it's available. Um, and I'm just going to add a case structure so I can have different logic in different cases. Um, and let's add an unbundle by name here so we can pass the data in. And yeah, we get out a message and data. Sweet. And we're going to connect our message to the case selector and pass the data in there. Um, so this way, you know, event handler can 
receive a command and it can send it down to the message handler loop and then the message handler can execute a specific logic down here that it needs to. Um, so I'm going to create this uh, default case and this first case I'm going to create is just going to be a shutdown case. Up here at the top when we click panel close I want to send a shutdown command. Um, so I'm actually going to use this NQ element at opposite end. So this is different than our typical NQ. So when we NQ an element, it's going into the queue and data comes out in like a first in, first out or FIFO order. Um, when we use the NQ element at opposite end, it takes this and inserts it in the front of the queue. So if there's other stuff in the queue, this will actually skip in front of it. Um, now typically you don't want that to happen, but sometimes for stuff like shutdown code, um, you do want that to happen. So you know if there's you know 10 other items in the queue, um, this can bump up in front of them. That way you shut down quickly. Or, or you know it, it could even be like an emergency situation and you need to shut down you know immediately. So this way you can kind of handle that. So I'm going to enqueue this at the opposite end and just send it this shutdown command. Um, so that's going to basically go to the shutdown case. My variant, and you know, in this case I don't need to send any data so I'm just leaving it as it is because um, I'm not going to use it. Um, so that's the nice thing with this design is I don't need to use data with every command but I can use it for those commands that need data with them. Um, now um, when we shut down I'm just going to pass a true out of here to stop this loop. Um, and whoops I close that out just a second too early. Um, yeah, so I'm also going to use this release queue function, which is actually going to release the queue. So I'm going to just pass this uh, queue reference around. That way, when we're done, when we shut, when you know, this top loop will stop, and it'll send the shutdown command down to this loop before it stops. And then this loop can shut itself down, and when it's done, it can destroy the queue. So, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing there. And now we can go start adding all of our different cases. So depending on what your code needs to do, we can set up the specific cases. Um, so let's create a waveform chart. And I'm going to create a push button. And I'm going to call this read. And I'm going to also create a numeric. Um, and I'm going to call this time between samples. Um, and we're going to change its representation to an I32. Uh, so let's go look at how we would set this up. So um let's uh in our event handling loop let's add a case for when this read button is pressed so when the read button is pressed i want it to at, uh send a command and i want it to be different based off of the different states that this could be in so whether you're turning this on or turning it off i want it to send a different command so i'm going to use this select function and um, I'm going to create a true case, which let's just make it say read. And for the stop case, we're just going to say stop. Now I can go back to my synchronization palette and I'm go, whoops, not notifiers. Let's go to NQ element. So now this is going to be a regular NQ where we put the data, um, in the queue and it will come out in like a first in first out order. Um, so I'm going to just create a constant of this so that I can then use my bundle by name function. Um, let me spread this out just a little bit more. Sweet. Um, okay. So we've got our message and our data. So we've defined our message. Um, now this data. We want to send some data when we send this uh, command. So let us drop this time between samples down here as well. Um, and I'm actually going to put this underneath. Um, and I can just wire this straight into the data. 
Um, you just get a little coercion dot there um, as it's coercing it to a variant for you. Um, if you want to get rid of that, you can just use this to variant function, which will take your data and convert it to a variant. So this way, uh, when I click the read button, I'm going to send a read command and I'm going to pass in the time between samples. And when I click, turn the read button off, it's going to send a stop command and it's going to send that data as well. So we've now defined a new case. We need to define both of these cases down here. So I'm going to add a read case. Um, and I'm going to add another case after called stop. So now one thing I'm going to do for this demo, and this is going to be different based off of what you're trying to do, I'm going to use this timeout function. So by default it's set to negative one, which means that it's never going to time out. So it's just going to wait till data is available or until the queue gets destroyed. Um, and I'm going to set this to be a shift register. Um, so yeah, going to connect that up. Um, sweet. So now when we get the read command, I'm going to use the variant to data to convert this variant to a numeric. That way I can pass that in. And when I use stop, I want to set this back to negative one. Um, by default, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do in the default case here in just a sec. I'm just going to wire that through. And for shutdown, I don't really care because I'm shutting it down, so I'm just going to pass that through. Um, so when we send this read command, um, we are then going to basically start setting this loop to go into a timeout state um, at whatever frequency is set here. So now in our default state, this is going to be our timeout state. Um, now is where I actually want this graph. I'm going to drop this here, and I'm going to uh, write a random number to it. So now as we run this, you know, when I click read, I'm going to start getting random data, you know, with this much time between samples um, until I click stop. And then it's going to stop because we will execute our stop case, which then sets our timeout back to negative one. So I'm going to add just a couple more features to this just to show you. So let's add a button and I'm going to call this one clear. And yep. And then I'm going to create one more called um oops. I'll just call this one average. And Sweet. So let's add both of these now. Let's add an event case to our event structure. I'm going to add this clear. Um, and we're going to use the nq element function to nq some data. And we're going to pass it a message that says clear. Now let's add a case here. We'll call it, oops, clear, um, sweet. And all we're going to do in that case is use this history data property to basically clear out any data in our chart. Sweet. So now when we click that button, the event handler is going to catch that and it's going to send that to the message handler, which is actually going to clear out the data. Um, so last, we are going to add a case for our average, um, and we are going to, again, NQ some data, whoops, and I'm going to call this average. Sweet. So that way... Um, when I click this, it'll send average. I just need to add a case down here and call it average. Um, and I'll wire that through. Um, and it, when I average, I want to basically pull the history. And I want to get the average of that history. So getting the mean. And 
let's format that into a string. And we're just going to say average data percent F. So yeah, we're just going to convert that to a string. And we'll use a one button dialog to display that there. So let's go run this example. Um, so when you run this, nothing happens. Um, once I click read, we start getting data at the frequency which I specified. When I click read again and turn it off, the data stops. I can click clear and it clears. I can click read and we start reading again. I can click clear while it's reading and it will clear while it's reading. Um, I also can get the average at any time. There's our average. Um, I can stop it, get my average then. Um, I can change my time between samples, sample much faster. Uh, I can clear that whenever I want, get an average whenever I want. And when I click that, it stops both of my loops. Um, so yeah, that would be just a basic template um, for a queued message handler. It doesn't it can be set up differently than that, and it will vary from application to application, but that's the general format. Um, you're going to have some sort of loop that's sending messages to another loop using queues. Um, now, like I said, it doesn't have to be set up using this exact data type structure of a message being a string and data being a variant. Um, that's just one that I found to be very useful uh, because it's very scalable and it works well. Um, but you know, it's up to you how you want to implement that. So yeah, that would be uh, just a queued message handler in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.